Greetings fellow interloper, it's me, Taylor, back with a hefty walkthrough video for the latest Expeditions update, Cartographers. This was a fun one and pretty different from the first two, as you'll do the majority of your missions on the planet you start off on. But rest assured, once you get through all five phases, your efforts are rewarded with your very own biological horror companion egg. Yeah, that's right, you no longer need to go after whispering eggs to get up close and personal with these green meanies. As the name suggests, they'll actually be on your side for a change, and if you're nice, you might even get to ride one. So it goes without saying that if you don't like spoilers, keep in mind this is a playthrough of the entire Expeditions 3, so you might want to turn back now. You'll also be doing a fair bit of refining, so if you need to brush up on a few recipes, stick around and near the end of the video, I'll take you through a few that'll make things go a lot smoother. With that said, let's dive in. The complete expedition is divided into five phases, with each phase consisting of seven milestones, or mini-quests. Well, okay, phase four actually has eight, so yeah. All in all, there are a total of 36 milestones you'll need to complete in order to finish the expedition. While these milestones are separated into phases, they can be done in any order. Because of that, you'll notice that I'll jump from various phases because some milestones are easier to get earlier than later. So let's start off with phase one. It may seem like you need to do these phases in order, and to some extent you do, but definitely take a look at all of them because depending on the tasks, you could knock out multiple milestones at a time. And in many cases, the rewards for one will assist you in another. So be sure to check out rewards for each one. For instance, in phase two, the reward for adopting a companion is five Gravitino Balls, three of which can be used to fix your ship as well, but we'll get to that in a second. And remember, once you've completed a milestone, those rewards will not automatically go into your inventory, so be sure to go into your Expeditions tab and find the milestone you completed and collect your reward. With that, let's get into our first and definitely the easiest one, the Auto Diagnostics 1. This is simply getting into your ship and clicking on the Begin Custom Repairs. Here, you'll see that four of your critical systems will need repairing in order to take off. When you get a recovered item as a reward, this is an item that you need to click on within your inventory to reveal the true reward by dismantling the item. In this case, we received 119 Indium. The next is another easy one, installing a terrain manipulator. So you'll need to mine a little carbon and dihydrogen crystals for the carbon nanotubes and the dihydrogen jelly. Again, this is super easy since plants and crystals are literally everywhere around you. Once you have this, you can mine out a nice little tunnel when a storm inevitably hits and you'll receive the Foxhole Reward, which is a much needed hazard protection mod, as well as plans to make a base computer, which we'll definitely need. Now that you have a little hazard protection, let's quickly jump to phase three and notice that we have geologist and botanist milestones. You'll need to scan 18 different minerals and 12 plants to get each of these. So whenever possible, make sure to scan everything as you're moving around. And also don't forget to scan inside caves and underwater where only certain plants and minerals live. The homecoming milestone is pretty straightforward. Establish a base. On this playthrough, I thought it best to stay fairly close to my ship, so I set up a base nearby, dropping a base computer. You'll need chromatic metal, which can be refined from copper, which is readily available around the planet once you start scanning around. Once you set up your base, you'll receive the homecoming reward, which will give you 20 salvage data and plans for a construction research unit. This unit will prove very valuable in getting you the necessary blueprints for powering your base as well as your base teleporter, which is a milestone in phase two. The next couple are very straightforward by using a signal booster, which is already unlocked for you in your construction menu. This will mark nearby structures for you to visit and earn your Any Port in the Storm reward. Lastly, in phase one, you'll need to walk 5,000 U. You can pretty much ignore this one since you're gonna get this no problem. You'll be doing a lot of walking. Once you've knocked out all seven within phase one, You'll be rewarded with the Phase 1 Completion Reward, which is a kick-ass bubble augmentation for your jetpack, which can be turned on at any appearance modification station. 
As we move into phase two, you'll see we need to repair the launcher systems, which as we learned earlier, we'll need one quantum computer and three storm crystals. The storm crystals are littered everywhere and are very plentiful during storms. They'll also come in handy in crafting other items down the line. As you start exploring, be on the lookout for companions, so you can not only adopt and get that milestone, you can also use them for faster transportation than your poor underpowered jetpack. And if you can find one of those rock spiders, all the better. You hop on one of those things and you can scale steep inclines super fast. Remember, in order to sprint when you're on your pet, it's the same as when you're on foot. Your sprint meter also applies to your pet as well, unfortunately. As you scan around, be on the lookout for burial sites. If we take a look at phase four, you'll need to collect 10 fossil samples to get that archeologist milestone. Again, this can be achieved whenever, so it doesn't have to be in any order. Along this same line, make sure to eliminate 20 hazardous flora to get your herbicide achievement, which is in phase three. You'll also find a ton of water, so when you're swimming around and scanning your plants and minerals, don't forget to snag a few crystal sulfides for repairing parts of your ship's waveform engine. Another slam dunk milestone, which also kind of falls in your lap, is the Phase 2 Master of Elements reward for walking 1500U in a storm. Trust me, you'll get this in no time. While we're on slam dunks, if you feel like coming in out of the storm, you might as well put that terrain manipulator to good use and make a thousand U tunnel to unlock your reward for Fear the Sun in Phase 2. As a side note, it's always best practice to have a save point at the ready, to occasionally save whenever you've completed a certain amount of progress, whatever you're comfortable with. Especially now that we have an expedition on top of a relatively new update that's still getting sorted. The Power Surplus Milestone in Phase 2 is awarded for generating 150 power. For this, you could string together a few solar panels and a battery, or if you happen to be near an EMG field, you could go that route as well, provided you've unlocked the survey device to the analysis visor. I just decided to use a couple solar panels. As you can see, you're going to need a ton of salvage data, so get in the habit of digging it up wherever possible. You'll also want to unlock and build the base teleporter in order to get the matter transport milestone in phase two. This will also give you six wiring looms that you'll need for future blueprints, as well as crafting quantum computers and a survey device, which as we just talked about, will allow you to find power and mineral deposits for other milestones. At some point in your travels, you're sure to come across the planetary archive. Here, you can sell some of those extra storm crystals to get a little money, I also make sure to buy out their stash of ion batteries for my hazard suit. These are super cheap and easy, but ammonia will also work and is widely available through much of the stuff you mine. Depending on how much you have, you will also need some wiring looms to complete a lot of your installs, as well as a few magnetic resonators for equipping your survey device. There's also a technology merchant here as well, where you can buy magnetic resonators from, as well as quantum computers. These will come in handy for repairing your ship and other installs. Quick note, if you can scan your 18 new minerals sooner than later, you'll be rewarded with plans to craft magnetic resonators. It probably wouldn't hurt to throw down a save beacon here to have a place to return to to get supplies or if you need to sell off some extra stuff you've accumulated. Remember, there are also NPC pilots that you can buy and sell with. All right, quick tip. When you come across rusted metal, make sure to refine that into ferrite dust. It has a generous conversion rate of one to two, and as you'll find out, you can't have enough ferrite dust. Either by accident or using some navigational charts, which you'll have after you claim some rewards, you'll need to find an abandoned building, which is home to everybody's favorite, Whispering Eggs. This can be a little challenging since this is a new save and our protection is minimal. A lot of people have their ways of harvesting these, but my favorite is just putting a base computer down and walling off each group of eggs. Yeah, you know, you'll get a face full of acid every now and then, but once they morph out through the walls, they actually can't get back in, so I consider this a win. You really only need to get a few eggs, but you might as well get some extras for cash. Alright, onto a friendly reminder here. Caves are chocked full of cobalt. And if you're in need of ionized cobalt, 
All you need to do is refine normal cobalt and voila, it's ionized. And once you've gathered enough salvage data, be sure to construct a trade terminal at your base. While it's nice to buy a few things at limited quantities, I actually found myself using it more for selling to free up some inventory. Alright, so let's talk about Herox. You'll need two in order to repair the pressurization capsule, which is the life support unit for your ship. You won't have the recipe for Herox, even though you can look it up in the catalog and see that you just need ammonia and iodized cobalt to make it. And in order to get the recipe, you'll need to find a manufacturing facility or operation center. But the best way to go is just to use the Spaceport Alpha milestone, because that reward gives you alloy crafting blueprints, meaning you'll have the blueprints for Herox as well as other valuable metals. But obviously Herox is the only one we care about. Now, if you'd like to refine it, there is a way to do it with three ingredients. You'll obviously have to get the large refiner, but I'll add that to the recipe list at the end of the video. So now the question is, how do we find an outpost? Well, that leads us to our next milestone. Located in phase two, this one's called Mechanical Man. All we need to do is deploy a Minotaur. And the key to finding an outpost is inside the Minotaur and its upgrades. So first things first, you want to make sure and collect the rewards for Mechanical Man. That's going to give you an engine boost that you're definitely going to want. And a word of caution, uh, one of the upgrades is a self-greasing servos. Don't put that on there because it will render the Minotaur inoperable unless you have acid. And for acid, you of course need to get a blueprint, which would be a pretty big headache right now. So let's skip the self-greasing servos. What you want to focus on is the Minotaur radar array. With this equipped, you can go into your quick menu and select the far right option, which is scanning for a planetary outpost. And as you can see, we found a trading post. Now it's a bit of a slog to get over there, but it's not too bad. Look at it this way. The cross country milestone inside phase four has you traveling 15,000 U by Exocraft. So you might as well knock a little bit out here. Once you finally make it to the outpost, go ahead and head inside and this should trigger your milestone. There's also a trading terminal here if you need to buy or sell anything. Now that we have the plans for the Pilgrim, I definitely suggest you take this one back. It's a hell of a lot quicker, especially when you equip it with the extra engine mods. And by the time you make it back to your ship, more than likely you would have eclipsed the 15,000 mark and gotten your cross-country achievement. Within Phase 3, there's a milestone called the Navigator, which rewards you for charting four waypoints. This is basically just visiting buildings revealed to you by activating a map. This one's pretty straightforward. The next two milestones are jetpack related and still in phase four. The first is... The hills are alive. Uh, no. Close though. This milestone is for climbing a mountain over 625U. It's pretty easy since you're pretty much surrounded by large spiky mountains everywhere. The trick is actually facing the mountain and jetpacking upward. When done properly, you actually won't drain your jetpack. So if it's tall enough, you can reach 625U pretty easy. Now the Rocket Man milestone is another that seems harder than it really is. What took me a bit to realize is that I didn't need to jump off something high and hope I can remain airborne for 30 seconds by feathering my jetpack. This is a lot easier if you find a very large mountain and climb it as we did just for the hills milestone. While you're heading upwards and not using any fuel, the timer actually starts when you lift off. So it goes without saying that if you find a really tall mountain you can do this on, you can fly to the top and then turn around and stay airborne long enough to get to your 30 seconds. Really easy. The detector wrist milestone is obtained by just discovering five lost objects, and the reward is a nice 750,000 U payout. The lost objects are just buried cash, which are pretty easy to find once you scan around. Now that you've repaired all your systems for your ship, you can finally leave the ground. And let me tell you, a takeoff has never felt so good. So now that we have our ship off the ground, we can focus on some of those milestones. The first one, and one of the easiest ones, is the Acrobat. All you need to do is pull slow to the planet's surface for 25 seconds. No need for barrel rolls or any fancy maneuvers. 
you just honestly need to pulse at low altitude. There's even a timer down below on the right for you to track. So one of the most anticipated milestones was heading to the space station, and yes, you'll get the welcome home milestone for visiting. But we finally get to put our station override code that we earned earlier to good use. What a moment! I've been looking forward to this for so long! Uh, what? I guess we'll keep waiting. Come on, Sean! Well, while you're here, you might as well increase your exosuit inventory and some movement mods. By now, you should have a nice supply of nanites. From here, you're ready to visit the first and second rendezvous points. These can be found in your galaxy map and are only one jump away this time. Similar to previous expeditions, if your rendezvous point is not showing up, go into your log and click off and then back on to your rendezvous mission. And when you back out of the menu, it should now appear. Ugh, that's a lot to cover, but hopefully I've provided you with all the answers you'll need to complete this expedition in a timely and well-planned manner. As I mentioned earlier, here's a few refiner recipes to assist you in your journey. As always, if you run into any trouble or something is confusing still, drop a comment down below and myself, or most likely someone else, will definitely assist. This was a really fun expedition on the heels of an awesome update. I was actually in the middle of another No Man's Sky project when this came out, so hopefully I'll be able to roll that out next week. I'll give you guys a hint. Think fan fiction. So thanks so much for watching, guys. This is Taylor with Whiskey Barrel Gaming, signing off.